from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Tourism Minister Dionisio Diaguilar has said the country cannot afford to enter a third COVID-19 wave, noting a worrisome uptick in COVID-19 cases over the past few weeks. On Saturday, 42 new cases were recorded, bringing the nation's total to 9,076. Friday saw 34 new COVID-19 cases, while 14 cases were recorded on Thursday, 33 on Wednesday, 12 on Monday, and 14 last Sunday for a total of 167 last week. 30 people are currently in the hospital. Health officials confirmed 160 cases the previous week. The Tribune understands the climbing COVID-19 numbers have concerned the government, sparking discussions at the cabinet level over whether certain islands may now need tighter restrictions. The Minnesota administration wants to get a handle on this situation as it awaits a shipment of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines tomorrow from COVAX. The Bahamas Christian Council's COVID-19 Vaccine Investigative Committee has released its report on coronavirus vaccinations, saying experts agree that the benefits of getting the shot far outweighs the disadvantages. However, the committee recommended that all churches make their own determination in advising their flock about taking the vaccine, adding that whether or not a person decides to get vaccinated is a personal choice. The March 22nd report, which was released to the media yesterday, looked at several concerns of the Christian community, the emergency use of COVID-19 vaccines, COVID-19 vaccines' interaction with human DNA, the use of fetal cell lines in the vaccines, and the relevance of COVID-19 to end-time prophecy. The report noted that the World Health Organization validated its first vaccine on its emergency use listing on December 31, 2020. Two people lost their lives over the weekend in separate traffic accidents. The first incident happened on Friday in Andrus. According to police, shortly after 5 p.m., officers on that island were called to a traffic accident that occurred in the settlement of Stanyard Creek. When the officers arrived on the scene, they met a dark blue Honda Accord with extensive damage as a result of colliding into a utility pole. A close inspection of that vehicle revealed an unresponsive adult male trapped in the wreckage. The body was removed and transported to the community clinic, where it was later pronounced dead by the medical practitioner. The second incident happened on Saturday before 5 p.m. at Cumberland Street in New Providence. When police arrived, they saw there was a collision involving a Nissan Cube and a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Investigations are ongoing. More than 7,000 people in New Providence and Grand Bahama have received the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, with officials expecting 33,600 more doses this week. According to the Office of the Prime Minister yesterday, the expected batch of vaccines from the World Health Organization's COVAX facility represents the first tranche of 100,800 doses, earmarked for the Bahamas and prepaid through the PAHO Revolving Fund. The statement said around 63% of people who have received the vaccine are age 60 and older. 42% of people who received the vaccine were male and 58% were female. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, The head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention made an impassioned plea to Americans not to let their guard down in the fight against COVID-19, saying she has a recurring feeling of impending doom. President Joe Biden prepared to announce further efforts to expand access to coronavirus vaccines. Speaking during a virtual White House press briefing, Dr. Rochelle Walensky grew emotional as she reflected on her experience treating COVID-19 patients who are alone at the end of their lives. Canada's National Advisory Committee on Immunization is recommending a pause on AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccinations for people under 55 for safety reasons. It remains a recommendation and it is up to each of Canada's provinces to decide to follow it or not. It was not immediately clear why that is being recommended, but several European countries that had suspended using the vaccine over concerns it could cause blood clots have resumed administering it after the EU's drug regulator said the vaccine was safe. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. Prefrontal activity associated with an approaching cold front near the extreme northwest Bahamas will enhance some unsettled weather across that area, while a weakening high-pressure system dominates elsewhere today. Beachgoers in the central and southeast Bahamas are still being urged to exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents at east coast beaches. Meanwhile, boaters and residents in the northwest Bahamas should remain vigilant for possible waterspout and tornadic activity. 
activity. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudiness and very warm, with a few scattered showers and the chance of an isolated thunderstorm, mainly across the extreme northwest Bahamas through tonight. Small craft operators should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas, in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots, falling light and variable at times over open waters. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be mostly sunny, warm, and breezy, with a few scattered showers this afternoon, mostly fair and mild tonight. A small craft caution remains in effect. Winds easterly at 15 to 20 knots over open waters. Seas 4 to 7 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 88 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 74. The sun will set this afternoon at 723 and will rise tomorrow morning at 703. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.